الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد وعلى علی و صحبه و سلم اما بعد احب تف اللہ کنٹینوئنگ آن ان آر اسٹڈی آف تفسیر سورۃ الفاتحہ ان سم آف دا فوائد دیٹ وی گیٹ فرام دا علماء آف اہل سنہ وی کنٹینیو آن ان دا اسٹڈی آف دا سورہ ان مے اللہ بلس و توفیق سم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایاک نعبد و ایاک نستعین اہدین الصراط المستقیم صراط الذین انعمت علیہم غیر المغضوب علیہم ولا الضالین Barakallah feek, jazakallah khairan. Of course, we also always should begin also with what? Ista'in billah wa seeking refuge in Allah from the shaitan. A'udhu billah min shaitan ar-rajim. So in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the surah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, or the most beneficent, the most merciful, as they translated sometimes. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, all praise belongs to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. <clears throat> Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most gracious, most merciful. Maliki Yawmiddin, master of the day of judgment. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. It is you who we worship and you uh, whose aid we seek alone. Ihdina surat al-mustaqeem, show us the straight path. Surat al-ladheena an'amta alayk. Alayhim ghayr al-maqdubi alayhim wa al-dhalim. The way of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy grace and those whose portion is not wrath and who have not gone astray. So in this surah, Ben Uthameen wa rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatin wa asiyah, he mentions that this surah, it distinguishes, uh, it has characteristics which distinguish it from other surahs. And one of those characteristics is that, of course, that Al-Fatiha is a ruqn of Salat. It is one of the pillars of prayer. And that it is the, and of course the Salat is the best pillar from amongst the pillars of Islam. How many pillars of Islam are there? Five. Five. And Salat is the second pillar and the second most important pillar after the Shahada because the Shahada is, contains Tawheed and it contains uh, believing in the Prophet ﷺ, bearing witness that he's the, the last Prophet and Messenger. So that means following the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So there is no. Prayer, as the Prophet ﷺ said, فَلَا صَلَاءْ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَقْرَى فَاتِحَ الْكِتَابِ That there is no prayer for the one who doesn't recite the Fatiha. You have to recite Surah Al-Fatiha when you are praying. And that means even behind the Imam. If the Imam is reciting, meaning it's a, a Salat, that the, the prayer is silent, like for example for Dhuhr or Salat Al-Asr, then <coughs> you still have to recite Fatiha behind the Imam. And also another benefit the Shaykh mentioned is that it is a ruqya, meaning that you read the Surah Al-Fatiha as a cure for sicknesses. Like for example, if uh, someone is sick, you can read Surah Al-Fatiha or do ruqya uh, sahih um, to help cure them. And one of the evidences for this is that the Prophet wasallam read to uh, upon the person or, or advised the person who was bitten, I believe bitten by a scorpion or they were stung by a scorpion or bit by a scorpion. And he said, وَمَا يُدْرِكَ أَنَّهَا رُقِيَةً Meaning that the, the surah, surah al-Fatiha, is a, a cure for that. That is a way that you can try to get 
seek cure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading it for that scorpion sting or that scorpion bite. What we want to avoid, as the Imam mentioned, is that there are many people who read Surah Al-Fatiha and they make a bid'ah. Surah Al-Fatiha is from the Book of Allah. It's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But someone can read it and use it in a wrong way, something that the Prophet sallallahu didn't do. For example, some of the people, they read Surah Al-Fatiha uh, whenever they make dua. Whenever they make dua, when they finish dua, they read Fatiha. Okay, this is not anything that is mishroor. This is not something... Uh, which we should do. There's no evidence from this from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, or the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning the Sahaba didn't do it, the Tabi'een, you know, the students of the Sahaba, they didn't do it. The Itba'a Tabi'een, meaning the students of the Tabi'een, they did not do this. So we don't have any evidence for after you make, it, make dua that you read Surah Al Fatiha. Likewise, some people also read Fatiha. When, uh, for, for like whenever they're having a, a birthday or if they're having a aqika, you know, for a, a party for the newborn baby or some celebration, they read Fatiha. This also was not legislated in Islam. And this is a mistake. And what you'll find, and I, I, I've seen this myself, especially in some Sufi masajid, that I used to pray in a, a, a masjid in, when I lived in Aden. And... After the Salat, a man would stand up, or they, the, the Imam would maybe make dua, and then he would say, Al-Fatiha, and everybody would stand up, and they would start giving each other salams, and they would start almost like dancing, you know, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli, and, and then they would go, Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar you know, so they would do this all together. Wa'iyad billah. This is bid'ah. This is not from, they have no evidence for this. And this is something very strange, something like almost a dance or a, like a party in the masjid. Well, I understand, and this is true. I used to see this all the time, and I would leave the masjid, or, you know, I was very shocked because I thought it was a, a masjid on the sunnah, the way the imam, he had knowledge and would always recite, uh, you know, stories of the Salaf and so forth. And likewise, the Imam, he mentioned something very important. And the reason why we don't recite Fatiha like this is because he says, <laughs> He said, because Ibadah, worship in Islam, and we've talked about this many times, is that it, he said it mabnaha ala tawqif, meaning that you cannot make something new in ibadah. When we talk about worship in Islam, it is something it's already uh, legislated by the Quran and the Sunnah. It's tawqifiyah. You cannot make something new with it. You can't change it. The ibadah say the same. We pray uh, Salat al-Fajr. It's two rakat. You cannot say, well, I, I want to increase my reward. I want to make, uh, uh, I want to make it four rakat. No, because it's tokifia. It is something which is, you cannot change. And so it, this is what all ibadah in Islam is tokifia. And the second thing that he mentioned and that it involves ittiba, that you have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And that's why we don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha in those ways. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began, وَقَوْلُهُ So likewise, we don't say, Bismillah, we, we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we'll be going to begin to receive, uh, to, to recite the Quran. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in this ayah, Bismillah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, there is, this is a way we're saying in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most mer merciful. We are seeking blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning some of his divine names and attributes. Ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim. And 
when we say Ar-Rahman, it refers to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses Rahma Wasia. He possesses subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of his attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. That although your mother is merciful with her baby or with you, her mercy cannot be compared to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his creation. Allah is the mer most merciful. Ar-Rahman. He's the most merciful. Ar-Rahim. He's the most beneficent. So Ar-Rahim, it means that that he is giving that mercy to who, whomsoever he pleases to his creation. He is the most beneficent. He is the all-giving of that mercy, of that rahmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, some of his names and his divine attributes. Some of the other uh, benefits we reach uh, in a hadith Qudsi. And this is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal qala Allah ta'ala qasamtu salat bayni wa bayn al-abdi nisfain. So in this hadith, this is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that he heard the Messenger of Allah, or the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah the Almighty said. So when we have a hadith Qudsi, this is a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is relating on Allah, but it, 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 relating the speech of Allah, but it is not considered Qur'an. Okay, it is uh, called a, like a sacred hadith. So in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah the Almighty said, I have divided the prayer between me and between my servant in the two parts. Allah said this. So if the servant, that means when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praises, all the praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, meaning the Lord of all things, Allah says, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَمَّدْنِي abdi." That Allah says, my slave has praised me. Allah says this. When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says this to the angels. وَإِذَا قَالْ And if uh, you say, the person says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Qala Allah Ta'ala, Athna Alayhi Abdi. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, when you say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful, Allah the Almighty says, my servant has praised me. Athna Alayhi. فَإِذَا قَالْ مَا لِكِ يَوْمِ If he says, the, uh, the owner of the day of judgment or the master of the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says majinini majini majinini abdi my slave which means like my slave uh, similar to my slave has praised me my slave has exalted me that you have exalted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa idha qala iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in then Allah the Almighty says, Have a baini wa baina abdi nisfain. That is between me and my servant, half with, with my servant and half with myself. Wa qala ihdina surat mustaqim, you know, guide me to the straight path. Then Allah the Almighty says, Have a abdi, wili abdi ma sa'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty says, when you say ihdina surat mustaqim because this is a dua you're saying uh, guide me to the straight path you're supplicating to Allah in surah al-fatiha one of the aspects of surah al-fatiha or the attributes is that it's a supplication that you are supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that surah when you're reciting that surah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
this is for my slave and I am going to give him what he asks. Meaning that you asked for guidance, Allah is going to guide you. So that is a ni'mah that we learned in a, a, a ni'mah and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we gain from that hadith which explains to us in a general meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. And then in a hadith, in a sahih hadith on Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal salaytu khalf al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa abi bakr wa umar wa uthman fakanu yastaftihuna bi alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen la yadhkuruna bismillahi rahman rahim fi awla qira'a wa la fi akhirihi Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I prayed behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. And they all began their salat when they prayed by saying alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. They didn't begin by saying the bismillah out loud. So they didn't say, as you see some, some uh, of our Muslim brothers and sisters, and especially in certain countries, when they read Surah Al-Fatiha, because of maybe the madhab that they follow in fiqh, they will say, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. They'll, re they'll uh, recite that in Salat. But Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala, a sahaba, he said that I prayed behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I prayed behind Abu Bakr, and I prayed behind Umar, and I prayed behind Uthman, and none of them began, none of them read the Fatiha, I mean, read the uh, Bismillah out loud when they were reciting Surah Al Fatiha. None of them recited Bismillah Rahman Rahim out loud so you could hear it when they were reading Surah Al Fatiha. So that's another faida. And he said, and that in the beginning of their recitation, they didn't uh, recite it, nor in the end of their recitation, they did not say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we'll, we'll stop there and we'll continue on in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.